As athletes, we dedicate ourselves to being the absolute best we can be at our craft. No matter the field of play for most, the journey eventually focuses on one sport. Our guest today was on the hot route to professional hockey before his dream was derailed by injury. Instead of turning to coaching or other work within the game, he decided to pursue one of the hardest things to do in athletics, become a pro at a different sport. That's just what he did. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Win, a show where we interview champions and trailblazers and ask questions to uncover and discover their championship traits for succeeding in sports, work, and life. Our guest today, Adam A.J. Power, is a former hockey player turned professional golfer who currently plays on the mini tours in Las Vegas, Phoenix, and California. Adam has been the top 10, 15 finishers on several events and is grinding away to achieve his first win. With a long game that is well known by coaches and competitors, we don't think it's going to be that far off. As we mentioned at the top, Adam grew up playing hockey and his talents took him from the amateur AAA level to the WHL, cutting his teeth with the legendary Spokane Chiefs as a 16-year-old. Known as a highly talented puck-moving defenseman, his speed, toughness, heavy shot, and 6'5", 200-pound frame excited coaches and scouts alike. Adam was on the path towards the NHL draft before, unfortunately, injuries and concussions forced him to retire. While he may have been finished with hockey, he was not finished with sports. Shortly after retiring, AJ made the bold decision to dive headfirst into golf and began training with legendary coach Greg LaBelle and the famed Butch Harmon School of Golf. The rest, as they say, is history. Adam is married to his beautiful wife, Danielle. They have a chocolate lab named Ruby, and they recently welcomed their first child, son Oliver Power, into the world. Congratulations on that. He has a great story, and it's a great message, and we're excited to have him here today. Adam, welcome to the show. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much for the interview. Welcome, intro. Adam. Was, welcome. Good that was to unbelievable. See you, that was great. I love that. <laughs> we take pride in our opens. We, yeah, that's great. We try not to just go on LinkedIn and read your dash, dash, dash <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. No, no we, we really ha- we're happy that you're here, Adam. And, and yeah, I think awesome. You got, Thank you guys for having me. No, it's our pleasure. And, and we think you have an amazing story here. And, and I was excited about this episode because you made one of the toughest transitions. I, I, and we're going to dive mm-hmm. into that. But before we yeah. do, uh, as we said, you were on an upward fast track in hockey, right? You had mm-hmm. OHL interests, obviously WHL collegiate programs when you were 16, right? That's yeah. pretty awesome. But talk us through that progression, how you get started, uh, you know, why playing in the WHL was your choice and kind of your hockey journey before we get into everything. Right. Else. Yeah, for sure. Um, kind of crazy one, uh, originally from Kitchener, Ontario. And, and uh, when I was three, my family moved us to North Idaho. And at the time when we were there, I mean, hockey was like, not a thing, you know, like <laughs> small town, North Idaho, baseball, right. potatoes football. and baseball, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so my parents just decided like to find a local hockey rink, you know, being Canadian, didn't really know, we didn't know anyone. So yeah, they found a local hockey rink down the street and signed my brother and I up from kids for skating lessons. And then, you know, kind of slowly turned into house league. And I just like immediately fell in love with it. And, uh, you know, the Spokane Chiefs, they were like the closest thing to us as a professional hockey team. So I remember like going to my first game and uh, a guy who played there at the time, Brandon Cote, like I just like loved watching him. And I thought right. like as a kid, as like a six, seven, eight year old, I thought I thought that was like the big leagues. I thought those were the big dogs because they got the big stadium and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of really how it started for me was just fell in love with it at such an early age. And, and it was great. I loved it so much. And uh, uh, kind of like fast forwarding from there is just kind of when I was about 14, I was, you know, things started getting pretty serious. Like I started realizing like I was bigger than all the other kids. Like I would go to all these travel tournaments and I'm still like the biggest kid. I remember when I was 15, we were at a hockey tournament and my dad and I were standing in the lobby there and a couple of kids came out and they're like, dad, that guy's got a freaking beard. <laughs> so I was already shaving at the time. So, but yeah. And then, uh, you know, when I was, when I was 14, uh, that was kind of really when like everything started just like moving so quickly. Like, you know, we realized that if I really wanted to take this serious, that I need to go move somewhere and play with the best kids at my level and age group. And, and so that's what I did. So that was like a crazy, crazy uh, adventure moving away at 14 years old, like leaving your parents, you know, like, of course, you go and live with other families. But at the end of the day, they're not your mom and dad and stuff like that. So that was that was a pretty wild journey for me. But, you know, it, it taught me a lot. Like you kind of have to learn to grow up quick and 
and uh and stuff like that but it was it was fantastic i loved it but uh yeah kind of kind of fast forward from there and and uh moved down to boise idaho played for the idaho junior steelhead no boise junior steelheads and played there for a year and that was when spokane kind of became interest and and um realized that they had a local kid six five and it's funny at the time i actually played as a forward so when they picked mm. me up i never got drafted um when they picked me up i was still a forward and so uh i met a guy jeremy milamock who was who was really big for me down in boise kind of s- slowly teach me kind of how to be a pro and like train the right way and practice the right way do the right things i kind of really hang on to his coattail and, and then I lived with the junior A coach there at the time, Dwayne Oliver, John Oliver, who again was just like, it was awesome. I was 14 and I would just go from school and I'd go my practice and I'd go to high school practice and I got to go practice the junior A. Team. It was just, <laughs> it was great. It was just nonstop hockey. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of really how it started for me. I mean, I, I never imagined getting as far as I did at a young age. I just loved playing hockey. It was just great. It was so much fun. Like, I mean, sports for me has just always came so easily i mean i'll admit like school wasn't always the easiest thing for me but like sports sure. were everything like still to this day like sports are everything to me you know so yeah i mean that's i can that's understand really that kind of, yeah yeah <laughs> I think jb and yeah. i are in the same position as you with that yeah for sure. yeah, yeah. So, magical but yeah it. i mean for me i mean that's really that's how it got all started for me with hockey and and um and kind of we'll get into it later but even golf too golf was at an early age i'll never forget the first time my dad took my brother and I golf and I was probably nine or 10 and we got done the round. I think I shot like a 140 or something like that. And my dad was like shot a hundred and my brother shot like a 102. And I was like, I won. Right. And they're like, no, you <laughs> lost. I'm like, well, I shot the highest score. That means I had the most points. I went They're like, no, that's not how golf works. And that's when golf too was like, Oh wait, so the lowest score wins? Oh, okay. Now, there, there now, are there are a lot of challenge. people that wish golf did work that way. Right. Yeah. Right? I'll, yeah, I'll say that. Sure. But no, yeah, for that's sure. absolute lowest for score. Sure. For for our listening audience that, that might not be into hockey, just to understand uh, major junior hockey, uh, the WHL and, and that level is is equivalent to NCAA division one football, mm-hmm. right? So and yeah. and the team, the Spokane Chiefs, uh, are like as I said, they open a very storied team in major junior hockey, uh, yeah. like like, like yeah. an Alabama or Auburn football level yeah. understanding yeah. In, in Canada. Uh, same thing with with Kitchener with the Rangers. But um, I just want to set the table here for everybody listening that that you know you were you were playing at that level. Yeah, and um, you know, and and uh, the WHL at the time, like being a kid, I mean, I didn't really like we lived in North Idaho, so like hockey wasn't on the map like it is like for kids nowadays in Canada and stuff like that or even East Coast like I know in East Coast like high school hockey is just crazy big yeah, right nice. um so like I didn't know like the WHL I didn't know the OHL I didn't know what the, I didn't know what the CHL was I mean I I knew what college hockey was it's funny I like I always dreamed about playing for Boston College that was like my favorite team at all of all times but then I kind of slowly as I got older in the sport realized like oh what's this like what's the CHL route you know and I heard it's kind of like a semi-pro right and stuff like that and uh just being in Coeur d'Alene that's where the WHL was just kind of the best fit because I live west coast so WHL you have Tri-Cities, Seattle, Everett, um you know Vancouver and then Spokane were, were all right there so yeah just growing up then and I didn't really know what you know the difference was between the three of them but after I got there, I realized there's a really big difference between the WHL, the OHL, the Q. And I, I kind of had a, a little quick cup of coffee in all three of them, actually, when I when injuries kind of started uh, occurring. And I kind of started going place to place, living out of my suitcase for a little bit there. But, um, yeah, and then uh, kind of fast forward from moving to Boise, um, which was great. I loved my time there. It was fantastic. And, and uh you know, then it kind of some boarding schools came to the options for me. I went to uh, Notre Dame Prep Academy in Wilcox, Saskatchewan, which was just unbelievable. I mean, all they do up there is live, breathe hockey. Like it's it's nothing but hockey 24-7. That was such a great experience for me. And I mean, talk about a place where, you know, they've seen great players. Like you, you can go in there thinking you're a really good player, but, you know, then all of a sudden you see the, the wall of fame of all the people that have been there from, 
Barry Trotz to Russ Cornell. I mean, it's just unbelievable the amount of like history that place has. And, and, and that was just such a cool experience. Um, you know, learning from the best coaches and, and being exposed to the best, I mean, truly like the best eyes that can see you at that age. It was unbelievable. And then after that, I spent a year there and then I went to a, a new boarding school that had just opened up in Rockland, Ontario called CIH Hockey Academy. And uh, that was my junior year of high school. And that was really fun too. Um, that was another really opening experience for me to kind of get eyes from the OHL and the Q because now all of a sudden I'm like West coast. Now I'm going East coast and those eyes are getting on me too. And so then I'm, they caught wind that I'm from Kitchener originally. And so then the Kitchener Rangers were kind of talking to me a little bit, but Spokane had already owned my rights. So um, fast forward to my 17 year old year, I went to the training camp and had a really good camp. And yeah, they, they signed me my first year uh, at 17 with Spokane. And that was uh that was a, that was a really cool experience. And that's kind of really all of a sudden where everything just, blew up with the hockey world and it was it was awesome I mean got to meet a lot of great people do a lot of cool things and I tell you it was a life learning experience for me it was unbelievable I loved it I mean but I loved the grind of it I loved playing there it was it was it was a great time I loved it so it's amazing Adam I love listening to your story again and again and you could see the uh the the passion in your face when you're talking about it and um you know i've seen you play and you're such a great player ali i'm just going to tell you a quick little story that one time that i saw adam playing at notre dame in regina saskatchewan so if anybody's ever been there you you should get hazardous duty pay for going to saskatchewan number one okay and and I apologize he, to our canadian listeners by the way no listen <laughs> they, 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 they know it too. And then so um, know it outside, too. outside of this, uh, outside of the prep school, Notre Dame prep, prep school, which is awesome, by the way, well put together. Mm-hmm. There's this little diner. So, we, you know, we watched the game, everything else. Yeah. We went there we went there to eat. And so we sat down and there's no menu. And, and I said, um, is there a menu? And the lady said, no. She's like, hamburger or spaghetti. <laughs> and, and I was like, excuse me? She's like, Hamburger or spaghetti? So, of course, in my typical East Coast, you know, mantra, I'm like, so she's almost out of the question. And she like laser beam me. Yeah. And they're like, get this American out of here. Get, get him out of, here. out of here. <laughs> get him out of so here. Tell him, tell him to get out of here. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's like uh, un- uh, unbelievable. <laughs> well, wait, what, so, what did you get? Uh, I think I got the spaghetti. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think like she just brought me something. I, I thought you would have been like, I want a yeah. hamburger with spaghetti on yeah. it. That's what I, I could right. see. Well, <laughs> there's, even a better, there's even a better part of the story because I went with, um, I went with uh, Adam's parents to this thing and, and I was sleeping. And when we got off the flight, it was like, you know, you land at this airport, you got off the flight. And it was like that scene in Rocky four right. where <laughs> they're getting off the airplane in Russia yeah. and the burning like, hearts playing like side, yeah. side. Yeah. Snow yeah. And I am like, <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding? Like, I'm like, are we in Russia? Did I fall asleep? And, right. and you guys drug me in and there was wind blowing everywhere. And we get in this SUV and we are like these snow covered roads and his mom's driving. And I'm like, I'm like, should we be driving this fast? And she's like, wait a second. Aren't you like an army ranger combat veteran? Just suck it up. And I'm like, you know, can I put another seatbelt on? It was I was, like, there was yeah. like, you couldn't even see the roads yeah, right. driving in Saskatchewan. It's all flat. Um, but the only thing that saved the day is about, you know, Every 20 minutes, we stopped at a Tim Hortons. So, you know, that, <laughs> yeah, that was, you have to. It's just a staple. Right. So you have and to. just remember, JP, in Canada, you, you, you know, it, it's not Edmonton. That's what you got to say to yeah. yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not Edmonton. It's yeah, not Edmonton. That's true. Exactly. That's yeah. true. Lee, a, a, funny, a funny little story of, of how JD and I first met. Um, when I was living in Boise, we went to Nationals for the first time. And um, we were in, I can't remember where exactly, but we were in New Jersey. <laughs> And um, a mutual friend of JB's and a kid that played on my team, his dad was the equipment manager for the Rangers at the time. Right. Yeah. So, so JB was close by and uh, after one of our games, JB came and gave us this, this uh, big speech and, and, uh, but teamwork and leadership and, 
you know, we're a bunch of 13, 14 year olds sitting up there. So a couple of us, you know, well, a few kids were kind of messing around and, and, you know, JB kind of quickly Sergeant major snapped on him and, yep. and kind of fast forward <laughs> to the end of the end of the conference. And my dad is a, a very big man. He's pretty intimidating and, and uh, you know, the, everything's done and JB's standing there shaking everyone's hands and he just sees my dad just barreling down I'm like, I'm the like, aisle. I'm like, man, I cursed out this kid, this parent's kid. Here it goes. Right. It so wasn't was me. Thinking, it wasn't me. No, he, he, yeah, so it was great. So, and so JB's like, oh, I'm in trouble. Here comes this big dude. He's going to come chew me out. And all of a sudden my dad's like, oh my God, JB, that was the greatest thing <laughs> I've ever heard. He goes, I loved it. I need you to come work, work with He's me. like, these other, come. these kids, yeah, these kids are little sissies. This was great. Good job. I was like, oh my God, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Was, and that's, that that's was, how JB and I met. And we yeah. built a very strong relationship. Yeah. I mean, that's we good. still to this day, I, I call JB and talk to him about yeah. life and, you know, and even what's sports and you right. know he doesn't know everything about golf but he but he gets the mental side of it because you know he has experienced his his experiences in life and and right he um really helps talk me through that and kind of you know helps me sometimes simplify things because i can i can kind of tend to overthink things sure. at times so well and i'm sure so, yeah, that's kind of the relationship. Like, you know, golf is your thing that's what you do this is what i do like you know right and and um, I remember my first time with JB and this is a compliment JB, it, even if it doesn't sound like one, but I remember we did a podcast together. It's the first time I ever met you. And, and it was the, one of the first podcasts I was, I was really quiet on. Um, and it's not, it's not because you're overbearing or something like that. You, you do, we, we both talk a lot, but my point was, I was just so enthralled with you because I have such an affinity for the military. I'm like, this guy's awesome. And I, I like looking back at that episode because I'm sitting there just like, <laughs> as a host, just looking at him. <laughs> yeah. You're just kind of like, <laughs> Yeah, for those of you, for those of you listening to this, my eyes were wide. I'm like, this guy's awesome. And now I am honored, not just privileged, honored to sit here with him multiple times a week uh, to do that. And he hates compliments, so he doesn't blush. He does. He, he, yeah, he smiles he, like he's smiling right now. But um, and I'm I'm like two thousand miles away, so you can't get to me too quick. I can't barrel down the aisle or anything <laughs> like that. But uh, no, JB, we plus love you're it. getting a snowstorm. Why would yeah, I want to? I can take it. I, I'm yeah, not exactly. complaining about it. I'm going <laughs> to drive in it. I'll stop at Dunkin' Donuts because we don't have Tim Hortons down here. I'm just going to enjoy it. No, listen. Let's let's keep the episode going because this is going to be one of those that yeah. goes six hours. No. If we don't. Yeah. Um, but, go ahead. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, AJ. So when you you know when you realized you know, had some injuries there, the decision you know hockey was over. Mm -hmm. That had to be a tough period in your life where you had to step back, assess. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are. You know, what do I do now? You had to look at your options. I know family is important to you. Can you talk about like how you found support and then, you know, got yourself back going? Yeah, I mean, it was like it just kind of happened so fast when when I decided hockey was over for me. I mean, you just kind of get one injury, and you know, unfortunately, they just kind of start piling up once you get one. For some people, for me, that happened, and um, yeah, I remember going back to. Um, my final year of junior, I was playing in the OJHL at the time, the Ontario Junior Hockey League for uh, the Aurora Tigers. And and I just got sent back from uh, the Niagara Ice Dogs training camp uh, in the OHL. And my dad was with me. And I just remember, like, I think it was final day of camp. I just, I just was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I just, I'm exhausted. And uh, I was, I was so terrified to tell my dad. Um, not because I, like, I knew he wasn't going to get mad, but just, it's just hard to like, you know, tell your parents that like, Hey, I think I'm done. And, and um, yeah, I just said, Hey dad, like, I think, I think, I, I think I'm done with hockey. I mean, I spent the last really 10 years of my life at that time, like being the best I can be training, doing the right thing, eating right, training my body, um, you know, doing all that stuff. And, and I just remember he was just, he just, gave me the biggest hug and just said like I understand like I support you and anything you want to do and I'll support you moving forward he goes like if, if you are truly done you know but if you're done like you know commit to it like you're done you know and I think that was a big thing um, because it was such a big part for me in my life that I had to really kind of get myself out of the game. I didn't want to look back and have any regrets like a year or two later. So when I decided to stop playing, you know, it's not that I resented the game, but like I was done. I didn't watch hockey. I didn't right. follow hockey. 
nothing. And it was, it was a tough period because you go from like living this like scheduled life, you know, you play for a hockey team, like every day you wake up, you have, you already know what you're doing for that day. It's like, you got practice, you got workout, you got video, or if it's a game day, you know, you got pregame skate and you got your few hour, your nap, your, your pregame nap and you got game. Right. And when all that was over, like, I was just like, I remember like the first week I was just like, what do I do? Like what, what's next? And, and, um, at the time, my parents had just moved down to Las Vegas full time. And it was just ironically just down the hill from from the Butch Harmon School. And, um, you know, my parents, they're so supportive and positive. And, and you know, we always knew that hockey or golf was something that I was going to pursue possibly if, if hockey didn't work out. And, uh, you know, I really leaned on my parents at the time to, like, help me. Like, I didn't know what to do, you know, kind of back to the first question you had asked about like sports came so easy to me. So like I knew I didn't want to go back to school. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do like for work. So my parents were just like, why don't you go and, you know, go to the Butch Harmon school and, and find a coach. And I got really lucky and I found Greg LaBelle and it was just kind of like a few months later, it was like, boom, I was like head first right back into golf right. and it was great. But that was a very big learning curve going from a hockey to golf. Um, well, you, you went from a very structured system to very to structured. Anything. Yeah. I mean, this is like people leaving the military AJ, exactly. people that are athletes right. that, are, that are done, you know, your right. systems is structured. And we as humans work very well in that structured system. Yeah. Now it was like, now you're deciding for yourself. And um, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think it's important to that young people understand, like, I don't know if adults, we understand, like you, you've been in this structured system, probably, you know, 13 or 14, you've been in this highly right. structured so of course you were playing before that but once it gets once it gets you know serious you're yeah. in this very structured regimented yeah. system yeah. daily what you eat you know the whole thing and so. how, how i mean i remember like even i'm 26 right now no i mean how, how during and the I transition mean, how old were you at that oh time? during the transition i yeah. was uh i was 20 not yeah, 20. All right. So so I want and, everybody to understand this, that like, you know, you said it was about 13, 14, you got serious, but it's about 10 years of your life, you said, right? 10 to 20 yeah. is a lot longer than 30 to 40 or 50 to 60, right? In terms right. of your life, right? There's massive right. developmental time, not just your body, yeah. but your mind. So when he mm -hmm. says this is all he knew, adults listening to this, coaches listening to this, you have to understand that's, that's his whole life, right? That's your yeah. entire life up to that point, mm -hmm. basically. So I just, yeah, I'm I mean, just trying to set the stage a little bit. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, like summer times, like it wasn't like, it wasn't, uh, you know, go play with your buddy. It was like, I was getting up, I was working right. out. I had, I had, you know, power skating lessons. Right. I had, you know, pick up games with all of my buddies that I worked out with, you know, like, so I would really only have like a four hour window in the day to where like I had me time and that's right. like through the summer. And then like, you know, then during the season, it's, it's right back at it, you know? So like, right. yeah, that was all I knew. And, and I want to tap on this too. For that. Um, for coaches, adults, people listening, especially parents, um, it's it's very easy to, to look at you, Adam, and say something like, oh, well, yeah, it was great. He had a great journey. I mean, that's what – I don't know how many 20-year-olds have to make a decision like that. That That is a hard, 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 hard decision yeah. to make. All right? It's – it's. A, yeah. I mean, look, I'm not <laughs> – I'm going to say this, and and please, everybody, take it at service level, but it's a divorce. I mean, you're making that type of decision mm -hmm. of separating from something that is yeah. not just something you you – have done, but you, you still love it. Right. In a way. Um, right. And it's yeah. hard. It's, it's hard. I mean, it's they always so say hard. about pro athletes, you have two deaths. It's the day you stop playing your sport and the day you actually die. Mm -hmm. Um, and Damn. I want to, I want to focus in on that because, um, not, not, not the stopping. What I find amazing about your story is this, look, everybody, including a, adult league players <laughs> says like, well, I'm going to stop this, but I'm going to pick up another sport, you know, and I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to do that. And, like, I'm not gonna lie to you, everybody. Nine times out of 10, probably 10 times out of 10, 9.9 .9 in your case, Adam, it's a pipe dream. Like, it's something you tell yourself, and, and, you, and maybe mm -hmm. you pursue it at a recreational level, right? You, you, you expand to other right. things. You stop and decide, I'm gonna be, try to be a pro golfer. Yeah. I wanna really focus on that because that's unbelievable to me. It's insanely hard. Whether, whether, listen, here's the athletes I know that do stuff like that Bo Jackson. <laughs> Deion Sanders, <laughs> right? Like, like it's not, it's, yeah. it's, you know, we're not talking like Russell Wilson kind of right. Yeah. And you, so, so I want to tap in on that because, you know, 
I want to know the mental process of being in, and you had to have been in pain physically and mentally leaving hockey right. to, to building yeah. the mental fitness to say, not only am I going to just do golf, but I'm going to succeed mm-hmm. at it, which you are. Right. right. Walk me through the mindset with that and, and, and the hurdles. Cause, cause I'm sure there was doubt at times. Yeah. Oh, there's, yeah, there was definitely a lot of doubts. I mean, you know, the best part about playing a game like hockey was it really built me up mentally, uh, tough wise. And, and yeah, it was, it was a huge adjustment and it was mentally, it was hard to leave the game. Like you said, it's like a divorce. Like, I mean, you, you drowned yourself in it and then all of a sudden right. it's like, poof, it's just gone. gone. Like, yeah. like that it's gone. Right. So it was hard, but like, I just, I always just told myself, like, if I'm done, like you're done, but like, if I'm going to go to golf, like just commit to it. Like, cause I know that I was good enough to play, you know, and when I was 14, my dad had to sit down with me of like, you know, you can go hockey or you can go golf. Right. Cause he also realized that like, I was really good at golf. Like I played some junior events when I was a kid. Yeah, you, you shot 140. You want, you get the highest yeah. the first time. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> you know, like I remember, I remember at, uh, at 12 years old, I played the junior event. And I shot 79. Like wow, I broke 80 awesome. at 12. Like yeah. it was unbelievable. Yeah, so that's, that's when awesome. we kind of realized like, Oh, he's pretty good at golf too. You know, so my dad's like, you know, 14, like you can go hockey, you can go golf, but like hockey is a young man's sport. I mean, hockey, you only have to you're 16 and golf, you know, you can always go back on it. So when I made that transition, um, I did keep a lot of the mental side that I learned from playing hockey and, and like training the right way, doing the right things. So I was already kind of a step ahead in the mental side of like, I've been there. I know what it takes to be there. Right. But now, but I didn't necessarily knew what exactly golf took, you know, to be the best in the world, but I understood the process of like, this is what I need to do to be a pro, right? Obviously you have to critique it and change it up for what you're doing. But I was pretty fortunate enough that, yeah, I mean, all those boarding schools I went to moving away at 14, like that really mentally got me prepared to help me grow up faster um, and, and face a lot of adversity. So, you know, I, I'm kind of a guy of like, I, I like to kind of look back and been like, you know, if I'm going through a rough patch, like, okay, like I've, I've been through this before and I, and I got through it, like I can do it now. Right. So that was, that was kind of the mental transition for me was just knowing that I, I had the right things, but I just had to trust in the, my process. Right. And I had to believe in my process right. of switching over. Like, you know, even to this day, like you can't, you can't doubt yourself. You have to, and you can't listen to the outside world. You have to like really give 110% and believe in yourself and believe in what you're doing. So Adam, I want to tap on something. Cause I think you have a superpower. You don't realize you have. And, and it's something that plagues a lot of people it plagued me for a long time. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, especially in hockey, I've been involved in the hockey world. So many young players, make the mistake of identifying that I'm only a hockey player. Right. Right. And what happens is when you separate the game from the game, you, and, and maybe this happened a little bit to you, but you go like, I'm a hockey player and I'm not playing hockey and I'm lost. Right. Right. I, I spent years identifying through the game and not realizing what you realize. And this is your superpower. I'm not just the game. I know how to work hard. I mm-hmm. am mentally tough. I have these assets that I can apply to anything, right? right? Like I, w- I was in my early 30s when I, I, re- I wrote a book the first time. Right. And it, I, what did I lean on? It was, it was hockey, right? Oh, this is right. just like working out. This is just like a marathon. This is, and, and I started saying, man, if I can do this, right? Now, I'm not, I'm not bragging about buying a book. I'm trying to tell, right. writing a book, excuse me. I'm trying to tell everybody out there what you discovered at a young age, man, 20 years mm-hmm. old is insanely young to be that mature, all right? I'm trying to explain to everybody, whether you're a coach, an athlete, whatever, the things you learn in your sport, you can apply to anything you're passionate yeah, about. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And that's what you did. That's what you yeah. did at 20. That's unbelievable to me, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and a lot of that, you know, like I had a great support system to lean on and, and to kind right. of show me those ways, you know. Um, that's a my parents have, have, have done very well for themselves and, and, you know, they have for sure faced their you know, times of adversity. And, you know, I would lean on them a lot and ask them questions. And, you know, my dad was just, uh, 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 my mom and dad were big advocators and just like, just believe in yourself. Like, that's awesome. You learn so many things playing hockey, you know, like let's take away the sports side of it. Right. 
when you move away at 14, you have to learn to be social. Right. Like you have to learn to be like, hi, I'm not in power. Like you have to learn to talk to people. You have to learn to present yourself. Um, but you also have to learn like not having your parents at that young age, like, you know, I had a bad day, but like tomorrow's a new day, right? I get another chance tomorrow or, or I got, I got another game next week or something like that. You know, like you just, you just have to, you just really have to like believe in yourself. Like that was, right. that was key for me. It's just like, you know, I said a minute ago, like just trust your process, but yeah, like you learn so much. I think a lot of kids like collegiate athletes, professional players who, who move on to business or, or whatever it is, fitness, like realize that you already learned so much from going through something. Now it might not be exactly that sport that you're doing, but like you've been through adversity, right? Right. You've been injured or, or you had a pain, bad game, no pain. right? Yeah. You've been through pain, <laughs> right? So like, take that, like use that as fuel as like, I've already experienced this. I right. can get through this. Right. But you've also experienced like highs, right? So like, right build off your momentum right you know jb one of the big things that jb and i talk a lot about and especially with golf you know like flatline you can't let your highs get too high and you can't let your lows right. get too low even keel. right right even keel right like i mean that and that's huge for me like i try you have to learn when to build off your momentum but you have to learn that like when you're down adversity is good like you know right you never learn if you don't fail i mean the old cliche saying right you have to fail to, to learn but right right but uh yeah i mean that that was really big i mean just i've already learned how to be a pro i've already learned all this i've already faced adversity so and how to be part of a team and, and Absolutely. You know, I, I always equate this to jb service and, and all the military members the transition you know you, the greatest asset when they come out of the military is hey you know how to be part of a team right. not so much the work you did you know um we transition to golf here you know I, i'm curious too because you know golf is is somewhat an individual sport. I mean, it takes a team right. to make a good golfer, obviously. Right. Absolutely. But you're going from a situation where you're relying on, you know, four other skaters and a goalie mm -hmm. to, to make it work to really yourself. And that, yeah. that kind of, as you just kind of alluded to the mental toughness it takes to highs and lows, uh, you know, everybody who's played golf, those over 18 holes. It's right. Lots of right. highs and lows. It's, so it's 18 yeah. individual matches in a game of golf. Like, right. Right. You so, know, it's so, crazy. Uh, by the way, best advice I ever got in a golf is you can hit three bad shots and still make par. I remember. Right. <laughs> I remember hey, that. Yeah. You know what I always say? It's a scorecard, not a postcard. <laughs> no comment section. That's they don't good. ask how, they just ask how many. Okay? That's great. That's, that's great. Good. So that's, why don't you walk us into, into just, you know, the golf, right? Like you yeah. got into it and then, and, and how quickly did you realize, wow, I can do this. I'm going to do this. Yeah. So, um, you know, fast forward, uh, six years ago when I decided, when I made that transition, um, I went over to the Butch Harmon school of golf and I just found a coach, Greg LaBelle. And we just kind of hit it off really quickly. I mean, it was, I tell you, it was funny. We were actually just recently talking the other day. Um, when I went and first saw Greg for my first lesson, I said, you know, we sat down and he goes like, what do you want out of this? I was like, I have a background, play professional hockey. I said, I'm 20 years old, but like, I really want to take it a crack at being a professional, like a tour player, you know? And he kind of, he kind of looked at me and he's like, okay, like, let's see what you got. So like, I was feeling so good. Like I, I thought I was hitting the ball great and stuff like that. And I'm like, he's probably only giving me like one or two pointers. And here we are seven years later, still <laughs> yeah, working right? on my game, you know, like, but um, yeah, it was, it was a huge transition, like going from that team sport to like, now it's like, it's just me. Like everything is on me, like kind of going back to that scheduled thing. It's like, I have to build my own schedule. Right. I have right. to hold myself accountable. Not that you're not accountable when you play a team sport, but it is so different being accountable for yourself and everything you do. Like the only way you're going to get better is doing it on your own at right. times, you know, but I, I think it's harder. I think it's hard. We it is the same thing with track and field. Yeah, like, totally. Uh, on, yeah. 100%. Yeah, it's, it's you know, easy even, when there's people relying on you. <laughs> yeah, and even like my coach said, like when we hit a point, he goes like, he goes, you know, like you and I can sit here and we can work, but he goes like at some point you need to like, you need to just go and play. Like you right. need to pack your car up and hit the road and just go play. And I'm like, okay. Because, you know, sometimes the only way you do get better is by experiencing it, you know, but 
but uh, yeah, when I when I made that transition into golf, um, it was a huge learning curve. And I, I mean, I'm going to the Butch Harmon School of Golf, like Butch Harmon, like worked with Tiger Woods. Right. I mean, everyone knows who Tiger Woods is, obviously, right? Like, <laughs> well, you'd, you'd hope so. Yeah. So, so you know, <laughs> talk about like an ego check for a second. Like, you think you're a good golfer? Like, no, these guys have seen great. Like, they know what great is, right? So, like, there was so many things I had to learn about golf besides just the basic fundamentals of like your golf swing. Like, you had to learn the mental aspect. Like in golf, you really have to like learn to slow everything down right playing 18 holes of golf is so much different than playing three periods of hockey you know like you're gonna hit bad shots in golf i still hit bad shots in golf everyone does but like you have another shot after that you know but it's not like it's not like i didn't give that shot my best effort of course i did but sometimes things happen so you have to forget about it it's completely over with shots shots over with so now you got to go move on hit your next one but um i think the biggest thing for me was when early on i used to get really frustrated when i played you know and that was like the hockey side of me of like you know hockey if you had a bad shift you know you could go out and like make a big play score a goal make a big hit you know fight you know you could get like such a different momentum swing by doing something physical but in golf like you hit a bad shot you getting mad does absolutely nothing for you it just gets you even more spiraled and downhill and out of control. And so like, that was the biggest thing for me, was just like learning, like, okay, let's slow everything down. Let's just take it one shot at a time, one hole at a time. You know, that's what I say. Like it's 18 individual matches. Like right. I have this one hole and then that's over with. So now let's go to the next hole, play that hole. It's over with, you know? Um, and then learning how to like ride on momentum of like, of you know when you are playing good like build off of that build off of that keep going with it but when you're playing bad like put in the time like get back to the range like you know what you need to do so just go grind at it it might not look good but you need to figure out a way to to make it work and and so that was honestly probably the biggest thing for me switching to golf was the mental side of it because i knew i knew at some point i i would physically get there Right. You know, because that that's like my my biggest attribute is like sports, you know, have somewhat came easy to me. And I knew I could get that part down. But the, the mental side was the the hardest part for me. Like I said, I mean, I just would get so frustrated. But now it's just like it is what it is. Like, just go ahead. Right. And, go ahead it's, and a again, you know? it's a life teacher. It's a life teacher. Totally. I, it taught me patience golf. I mean, so it, it, sorry, JB, I, real quick. I, I uh, first time I ever went to go to the driving range. I was late teens or early twenties. My hands were bleeding because I was approaching it like hockey. I was just yeah. like, got to hit this thing as hard as I can. As hard as you can. And yeah. I remember leaving with my hands were literally bloody. And I'm thinking, man, mm -hmm. I did this wrong. <laughs> I did this right. wrong. And uh, then I started to play. And less like you said, Adam, like just impatient, rushing the game. And I, and I it, it eventually it dawned on me, just you have to slow down and you have and to, you have to be patient. And Absolutely. I applied that to everything after that. So I, I've Absolutely. always said golf taught me that golf. Yeah. Taught me that. Yeah. Golf, a, was, golf was so big. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, JB. No, it's a great teacher. I, I, I just, um, you know, I went, uh, went on a, a, a tour with you and I, I was mm -hmm. for, for me, it was, um, you know, from the leadership and mental fitness aspect, just, just observing all of this. And I was like in awe, I was like a kid. Like I couldn't take enough notes because it was so good. And, yeah. and it was, I think it's so, so, you know, in hockey team sport, you know, you're playing team sports, but then all of a sudden, you know, you're with, you know, you're with two other dudes, you know, there's this group of three going around. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, wait a second, they're like going against each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and so every hole you're lining up against the guy and, 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 you know, you have to be friendly, obviously you're friendly, but not friends. Yeah, right? you know, it's a gentleman's game, right? It's a yeah. gentleman's yeah. game, but I'm like, that's a nice hey. way to say it. And, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, they're, you know, AJ's teeing off and the other two are, you know, silently judging him. And then the other guy tees off and they're silently judging him. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, wow, you really have to get in your, um, you, you know, you have to get in your own zone there. And yeah, that's absolutely. what I saw when you talk about like, mental toughness and focus i was like this is in this is really incredible 
what what these what you do as a pro golfer so talk about your focus now listen you had great focus as a hockey player you talked about that but now your focus now is is different you had to you have to make this adjustment and i, and I find you as a friendly human a personable right. human yeah. right uh, you talked about it when you know when you're 14 you're living away you know you have to go you know uh you, you know meet your sponsor family the whole thing right but now right. all of a sudden it's like you, you know it's and and I looked at some of these guys uh, that we were golfing with. I'm like, man, that guy looks like he is just mad all day long. Some other, you know, mm-hmm. when he, and, and it's a, you know, it's an up and down sport. You're like, you're like, yeah, that guy was just on the tour. And now he's trying to get his card again. I'm like, yeah. oh. so now it's crazy. So now this guy's in a completely different zone. Like, you know, screw everybody else. I'm in it for myself. Right. Just talk through that a bit. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, it's, 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 you have to like almost kind of tunnel vision yourself. Like when you, when you get on the golf course, like it's just, you know, you're with, you're with three other, two other guys, but you can't worry about what they do. You have to just be worried about what you're doing, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're in a group and you can be friendly and cordial if you want. You don't have to be, you know, you can be quiet, but they're there to beat me no different than I'm there to beat them. You know, that's like the, that's the part I love about it, the competitive side of it but it's just a different type of com- competitiveness. And, and yeah, I mean, golf is, it's a humbling game. Like, you know, I, I play with buddies who, who are on tour or who were on tour and it's just, it's so crazy how quickly like in golf, you can like lose it. Right. But it's also, if, if you do the right things, it's crazy how long you can stay with it. Um, so yeah, dealing with that was, is pretty fun. And, and, um, Sorry. Oh man. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, I kind of no, lost yeah, no, just there. your, no, just your, your, you, you answered it. Your individual focus now had yeah. to change because these guys are, you know, you're playing, you know, you're playing around. I didn't really even know how it worked. And then all of right. a sudden you're, you know, you woke up, you're like, okay, here's the guys I'm with tomorrow. And you're, and you were like, yep, this guy came off the tour. This guy, this kid played mm-hmm. in college. He was, uh, uh, you, you know, you played in a kid that played four years in college. His dad was right. a coach. And, and then all of a sudden, you, you know, uh, the first thing I noticed is with that, that, you know, you're driving the ball 30 yards further than this <laughs> too. Yeah. And I'm like, uh-huh. And then, and then I noticed how they looked at you differently too. Yeah. They're like, who's this Adam power kid? And, you know, bank, you know, you're further yeah. than them. And is they're like, really his name? They're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. And, 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 so, and yeah. And, 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 and so it's, and it's kind of on. Right. And, yeah. um, and, and that's the thing, like, I don't know how I would adjust to that. Like, well, let, let me I'm, ask I'm a big kind maybe. of a team sport guy. Right. Yeah. So, sure. You know, yeah. one of the things we preach on this show, Adam, and, and I think golf is maybe the ultimate for this outside, maybe like track and field. Right. Um, we talk about present moment awareness a lot. All right. Yeah. And, and it's a philosophy built on really two concepts, which is the, the present moment is the only reality. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can't be worried about the past. You can't be thinking about the future. You, you mentioned that before when you're talking about your shots and then also uh, control. Right. You can mm-hmm. only focus on what you control. Absolutely. So, so based on JB's question and where he was going with this, um, and maybe you could walk us through this um, as much as you'd like. You're out there, like like JB said, you maybe have a partner, maybe you have two other people out there. I imagine to successfully compete at the level you're competing at while, while you said it's a gentleman's game, you can't even worry about what they're doing. You can't focus on them at all. No. And every single stroke shot moment, you have to be present. You cannot be scorecard. You can't take a looking, shot off. No. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, here's what I wonder. And, and, and again, this is, this is the myst- mysterious part of like guys like woods and <laughs> everything. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, for me, present moment awareness is like it's we said this before the show. It's snowing here today. And I stood at the window actually before the show for 10 minutes, just watching the snow fall. It was just very mm-hmm. present. It's beautiful to me. And I, and, yeah. I, and I enjoy those moments. I try and find those moments where I can do that. People think I'm crazy. I've had people come up to me like, what are you doing? Just, it's beautiful outside. Right. Um, <laughs> you, you play in some pretty beautiful places. Yeah. Right. So how do you stay focused? How do you do it? Do you feel yourself slip from time to time or is it just you're on from moment one to the last moment how do you stay present uh yeah um i just i just try and just like be in the now like you just said like live in the now just i just i just kind of hit this like tunnel vision button and I, it's just like from from the first tee shot to the final putt like i just i just try and do me just right. i just try and stay in my lane and just do what i can do like right. 
control yeah. what I can control um, and don't let any outside distractions right. happen at all. Right. Like, um, you know, I actually, I'll tell you a crazy story. Um, Please do. Happen. So I just, <laughs> I just actually yeah. played in a, in a tournament uh, this past week. Um, I, I did okay. My first day was really bad. My second day was great, but um, we were on the 13th hole and we were on a par three and around this golf course is a walking path, right? <clears throat> and uh, we're in Scottsdale and I think there's like a retired community or something like really close to the golf course. And I'm getting ready to hit this birdie putt. And just before I hit this putt, this old gentleman, I'm not making this up, slips. And you've heard, you've heard no, a, no. a head bounce off concrete, right? Yep. Yeah. It's we, not pleasant. <laughs> we heard this guy fall and we were all just like, oh. Like we were just like, holy crap. And so we were like rush over to help this guy. And, you know, he's bleeding everywhere. We like call 911 and like, we were all like, what just happened? Like what's going on? You know? So then it was like, that was all over. And then all of a sudden we had to like get back to the golf course really quick. Right. And it was like, okay, that just happened. But like, like I need to flip my switch back on and like get back into like what I'm doing. Yeah, right. you're, just doing guy, you're just doing triage on a guy. Yeah, right? like literally. Like, and, yeah, and now like you have to go someone back get a and, tourniquet. And, and, and yeah, right. now you have to get a hit a you know hit a putt to keep you in the tour. tour right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Wow. And it was just like, and that happened, but you know that was over, and I had to get back to doing what right. I was doing. So you just kind of had to like tell yourself like you got to take a few deep breaths. I'm just like, all right, that's over with. Yeah. Let's get back to it. And that was kind of the that's kind of a good example of what I was talking about earlier. Of like I had to like slow things down again, because all right. of a sudden, like, you know, you have a resting heart rate and all of a sudden you're, yeah, it's traumatic. Heart rate just goes that up, like see what just happened. Yeah. And now I yeah. get to get back to golf and hit like, hit like a four foot putt and my heart's like pounding. So yeah. I had to like sit there for a second and just like take a few breaths. That's over with. Just hit the shot, move on, get to the next. Adam, there's, a, there's a great lesson there though, because like, you're talking about it so easily, but the truth is pe most people can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Most people can't do that. They'll get in the car right. traffic today. There's traffic. Now. Oh, I got to sit in front of this asshole. And now mm -hmm. I got to do this. And uh, you know, and oh, I got to deal with my kids. Take a second. <laughs> take yeah, a second. Just take a breath. Like yeah. it's not going anywhere. You're not going to go anywhere. I I've said this. People are born, live their entire lives unconscious and die. And they yeah. don't even take a moment. Mm -hmm. You're out there. Take a moment. <laughs> Take joy you know, being I alive. Like, I always laugh. Like I always just be like, just take five. Like, yeah, yeah. It it's not going to kill you. A minute, yeah. five minutes, thirty seconds. Like, so, take a step back. Yeah, relax. Okay, reset yourself, and then go forward. I, I also want to. I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. I also want to say that I think it's impressive and important that you saw another human in need and you stopped and you all went and helped. That's a, that's a yeah. big deal too. All right, like yeah. you weren't so yeah. focused, yeah. Yeah. you couldn't help the guy. Right? Uh, right. You know, we got to help each other. Um, we got to wrap this up in a, in a minute, Adam, but I, I do want to say just, just about that again, about, you know, take five. I mean, take 10 seconds. Like I'm amazed at people. I don't even have 10 seconds. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Um, in fact, again, quick life lesson for people. If you catch yourself saying, I don't even have a minute, I don't have 10 seconds. Uh, that's a mental block in your head. Mm -hmm. Like that, that, Absolutely. that is resilience. That is, uh, it's called restlessness, right? Yeah. You got to catch yourself saying, I don't have 10 seconds. You know what I do when I catch myself saying I have 10 seconds? I make sure I wait 10 seconds. You make minute, sure you wait. Yeah. Right. I, I make sure I take the time with your kids, with everything. But um, Adam, I, I love it. I have just one really quick question. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I got to ask this. I, you just have a kick-ass last name. I mean, I don't, what's it like to grow up with a last name power? That's awesome. I mean, you walk around. It's great. I mean, it's Jersey. funny. It's I mean, that's funny. awesome. I mean, the amount of times, like, I get the old please. Oh, you could almost be Austin Powers. I'm like, yeah, I could be, but it's power. No S. There's no yeah. S at the end of power. Yeah, yeah and you're, power. you're not English. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was great too. Like, especially playing hockey growing up. Like, because I was always the bigger kid. Right. Like, they're like, right. oh, of course his last name is Power. Like, is that really your last name? I'm like, <laughs> it's the one they gave me. Yeah, it's my last yeah. name. Yeah. Right. So That's it just awesome. kind of it just kind of worked with like my my build and my frame to have power, and then I like. 15 year old i'm already shaking and stuff like can you imagine if they named him jb power <laughs> oh my god and then you'd have to put associates at the end just because it sounds right no yeah, it, it's, seriously that's awesome and and uh again sorry 
what's next for you? I mean, uh, obviously you're 26, you said you're like, what's, what's the yeah. future for you right now? Or what's the path you're on? You know, uh, right now, I mean, my wife and I, we just welcomed our, our beautiful little boy, that's Oliver awesome. in this world. So congratulations on that. You know, that's another learning curve for me. Like, <laughs> that's is. crazy. I mean, I love it. It's amazing. He's and such the kid's a already a giant lady. He's, he's already a giant. He was yeah, he's, he's six, nine four. pounds, nine pounds, 22 and a half inches oh, my when goodness. he was born. He's got these he's nine big, pounds when he was born. Big paws on him. Oh, like, my goodness. Oh, he's, he's a big boy. Um, Better be nice to him. But, Adam. <laughs> he's going to, he's going to be running me over soon. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, right now, I mean, my future is, I mean, you know, like, I'm still on my path with golf. I'm by no means anywhere done with that. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get status on, on corn Ferry tour, Canadian tour, you know, to get to the PGA tour someday. I truly believe in that. And, um, but also like taking time, like to be a dad and enjoying that process and, and, and raising my son the right way, the way I was raised. I mean, I have two amazing right. parents and my wife has two amazing parents and, and same thing. Like I just want the best for him no different than my parents want wanted and still want the best for me, you know? So, right. so moving forward, is just, just embracing this life change and, and enjoying the process of, of being a new dad. And, but still, you know, putting in my time as an athlete, as a professional and, and getting done when I need to get done. But, you know, family is always there at the end of the day. So, right. well, so yeah, you, for me. you are, are, and will continue to be a tremendous father. I can already tell from this interview. <laughs> Absolutely. I've said it's the hardest job, but it is the most wonderful thing on the planet. And uh, I congratulate you and your family on that. And this has been Thank a wonderful, you. wonderful interview, man. I appreciate you being here. So. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was great. It was, it was an honor to be on here. And, and this was this was a lot of fun. And, and, and uh, nothing but great success for you guys down the road. And, you know, and, and I look forward to someday catching up again. And, and, and yeah, again, just thank you so much for, for this opportunity. It was great. And Adam, when you when you went on tour, don't forget us, okay? You come absolutely. back. On the show. No, absolutely. Well, I, no, when he sure. makes it, and TSN or ESPN does the like look back, they're going to come back yeah. to this episode. They're going to come that's, back to this. Yeah, episode. yeah that's how you. <laughs> for sure, for sure, a hundred percent. Yeah. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Win Championship Traits for Life. You can check out every episode we've ever done at pivotalmomentsmedia.com or check out us on your favorite podcast provider. We're there. Leave reviews, five stars. It's always appreciated. Uh, and uh, and uh, subscriptions. So thanks so much for listening. We'll see you in the next episode of WIM. Take care, everybody.